Welcome back guys, day 22 of the Fit Week Project. And on today's show, we've got one of the OG CrossFit girls, Katie Hogan. For those of you guys that have been in the sport for a while, you're gonna remember Katie as one of the Valley girls that was well known for her big strong legs, her intensity under a barbell, and her infectious smile. Hogan is a former NCAA Division II athlete in volleyball and track and field, receiving all American honors in both sports. She found CrossFit in 2008 and competed at a high level from 2009 to 2016, with her highest achievements being 18th place at the 2009 games and 20th at 2011. Today, she's a CrossFit level three trainer, a wife, a mom of two, and soon to be three, and still manages to stay super fit with her with only 20 to 30 minutes in her home gym two to three times a week. Wow, like when she said that, I was just shocked. Today, we talk about what her transition from sport to, to life has looked like and how she manages to maintain her fitness under a very tight schedule. This interview is so powerful for those that think they don't have enough time to, to, to keep or build their body into a lean fit machine. And I can't wait for, her, for you to hear what her secrets are. Some of my favorite takeaways from this video were one, how everything changed when she decided to be more involved with the kids' life. Number two, why comparing your body to those on Instagram is the surest, quickest way to feel like you're not doing enough. Number three, how she's learned that more is not better or necessary to look and feel fit. She's only doing it twice a week for 20 minutes. Number four, her very limited uh, gym routine, what that looks like. Number five, what keeps her motivated every day and how does she get through bad days? Number six, what her diet looks like today. Number seven, her biggest piece of advice for those that are wanting to look fit without spending hours in the gym. So be sure to check out this video with Katie and then follow her on Instagram using the links below and enjoy the show. All right, guys, welcome back to the Fit Chick Project. Today we have on Katie Hogan. I'm super excited to have her here. Uh, welcome to the show, Katie. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You bet. All right. So I'm super excited to have you on the show today because, you know, I mean, you've been, um, you've been sort of like in the role of, uh, you're cut your family girl, you know, I mean, like, at least that's what it looks like from on Instagram. Like you have a full on family that you run and you seem to manage it. You know, you, you look amazing. You just demonstrate a really good balance of sort of the, you know, like work and play and family. And I just want to like really kind of hear what you do, what your secrets are, how you've been able to find that balance. Yeah, that's, that's um, pretty cool. Yeah, you know, it's actually funny is it was one of the things that helped me kind of transition out of being an athlete was um, uh, having my husband and my stepdaughters and the way as the girls got older, they started taking on more after school activities and, and their school work was a little bit more intense. And I just kept realizing the more I trained, the more I missed out and, and was feeling guilty. I wanted to be a part of that. And so um, I made a shift in my lifestyle so that that could be my priority. I wanted to be able to help in the classroom. I wanted to be able to go on field trips. I wanted to be able to be there after school to pick them up, you know, make an after school snack that was healthy and help them with homework and take them to practice. And, you know, it's, it ended up having to shift my, um, how I trained as well as how I, uh, where I, and how I worked. Mm -hmm. Um, because it was fun to me. I've always wanted to be a mom. And so it was a big priority and I felt like I was missing out when I wasn't doing it. So, um, I've kind of, you know, like a lot of parents can relate. I've kind of myself and my husband have focused our lives around the kids. Um, we still do things for ourselves as well, but, um, you know, it's a big sacrifice when you have that. And so, um, the, the timing of their schedule is what fills my calendar. And then around that is where I plug in my training time and my mm. clients and all of that. So um, I'm able to, you know, we were able to create a home gym, a home affiliate in the garage, which makes it 
really convenient to be able to train and uh, work with clients, but still be close by if I need to run to school or uh, grab the kids or go to practice. And um, I can really easily work my coaching schedule around that. And the same with training. Um, I'm, my gym is at home, so I can train no excuses <laughs> uh, any time of the day, really, that I have free. Uh, it's a little tough to not be training with friends and a, a class environment. I miss that. Um, so I try to get that when I can. Um, sometimes that's on weekends when I work a weekend seminar uh, for CrossFit headquarters. Then that's when a chance I get to work out with a, a group again. So it's not completely absent from my life, but it's definitely not, um, you know, like it was when it was just a, bu a bunch of girls and, and guys training together to compete. Um, it's definitely a shift. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, when I was uh, in CrossFit, you know, that's the, I grew up watching you guys, you know, I, yeah. you were like the Valley girls or whatever. And right. um, so I definitely remember that you guys always look like you're, I don't know what it is about Cali girls, but you guys always look like you're having so much fun over there, man. It, it, it looks so like fun. fun. Yeah, it was. I mean, I'm sure you can relate when you get the right group of training partners. It's just like being with your best friends all the time. And for the most mm. part, we were all you know, young and single, or at least um, if we weren't single, we didn't have kids. And so most of us yeah. had a much freer schedule where we could commit five to seven hours of the day, maybe not straight, you know, maybe we'd stop and go get lunch in there. But yeah. we would have huge blocks of time just hanging at the gym. Um, yeah. and you know, when, when it wasn't training, it was also just kind of chatting and, and you started to have, um, the things you need outside of the gym, what, what most of us need outside the gym, social interaction and, um, you know, venting about whatever's going on in life or work, all of that happened in that yeah. same environment, you know? Um, so that was a little different than most people have. Um, but I didn't need to make time for those other things. It all happened in one right. class. Now, it's a little different to navigate because it doesn't mm -hmm. all happen at the gym. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what did that, uh, actually, well, what was the, what was your peak level, um, in CrossFit? Like what, uh, I guess ranking did you, what was the highest ranking that you had placed? Uh, so I was in the games two times back in, uh, sort of the earlier years of the games. I was in the 09 games and I believe I finished 18th. And then I was in the 2011 games, um, and that was, I think I finished 20th. So those are kind of my, my top finishes. And I competed in regionals um, from 2008, or so, sorry, from 2009 until 2014 as an individual. And then I think I, it was 2015, I took that year off. And then 2016, I competed on a team at, at regionals. So I okay. believe that was... For the extent of my years of being active, um, I was, you know, I've done some of the other ones like Wadapalooza and um, yeah. did well on a team there and got to try some of the other competitions that were just starting out and um, got to have some awesome sponsors throughout the years and do really fun things. So I feel so blessed to have got to be a part of all of that. It was, it was pretty cool and unexpected at the time. It was so new. Now it's kind of like, someone sees CrossFit, they see the CrossFit games, they set their sights on it. They, you know, they seek out sponsors, maybe, maybe not, but, um, there's sort of some groundwork already been laid. They kind of see the path. We didn't really, you know, we didn't see that path at all. We didn't know, um, that Reebok was going to be giving out sponsorships. And, um, I didn't even know when I started CrossFit, I didn't even know there was a CrossFit games. I found that out months into CrossFit and it was only the second year ever that the games happened. That's when I, I started and I watched mm -hmm. it on my computer at home being like, whoa, this is a thing you could join in. You know, it wasn't what it was now, which is mm -hmm. like it's on ESPN and everyone knows about it. People know about the games before they even know what CrossFit is. So yeah. Lots have changed in the, in the culture. Yeah. Yeah. You've definitely, you've been with it from, the, like you know early on so you've really been like kind of transitioned with it and that's um that's kind of actually what I want to touch base on is wh how do you think the the mentality as far as okay um as far as your average gym goer not necessarily an athlete necessarily but like average gym goers goers you know in the beginning it was kind of like yeah just um 
do a workout, right? And that was good. And, and, and now I feel like it's kind of, I mean, I don't know, maybe right, you know, quarantine right now. So it's a little different, but now it's sort of evolved into, well, that's not enough. Right. And so I know you work with a lot of CrossFitters and stuff. So how do you feel like things have changed as far as women trying to use CrossFit to look fit and how have they, like, how's their mentality changed in what is required to get there? You know what I mean? What's required to like get fit? Yeah. I think that's, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think people see a lot on social media and they see a lot of the good. I know I, I do. And when I scroll through Instagram, when I, when I take the time to do that, it's hard to have a realistic view of what the journey is when you just see six pack abs and jacked shoulders and no jiggly parts. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, not to mention everybody's tan and (laughs) look, you know, they've got all the cute outfits on and it's, it's really hard to understand, you know, how you're not there and what, um, maybe what's wrong with you or what you need to do to get there. Um, I think it starts to feel like, what am I not doing or genetically what's wrong with me or, um, you know, what do I have to pay to get to look like that? You know, do I need a personal trainer? Do I need to pay for CrossFit? Um, I know some people can't afford. I know for me, when I was first starting CrossFit, that was the biggest expense besides my rent in my life. And I had to sacrifice a lot of things in order to make my CrossFit dues each month happen, you know? And so I understand that for people, um, it can feel unachievable. And then we, we put a judgment on that, that we feel like, um, it, it, I can't even get there. And so there's something wrong with me. So Mm -hmm. I think, um, it's tough to just go off of what people see and what it takes to get there isn't necessarily um, the game's level of dedication of training seven hour days. Um, that, that to me, what you're training more is like um, the stamina to last a whole week worth of competing. The, um, the ability to recover between three to four workouts in a day. Those are the things you're training when you're training as a games athlete. And I think the product aesthetically people like they maybe Mm -hmm. if they're, if they're into fit, fit look, they like the product and they think that's what I have to do. I have to do more, but really that's not the only way to get there. Um, You can really simplify and focus on some key pieces. Um, I would say mainly nutrition Um, and that is going to get people so much closer without the hours and hours. I think that's, what's missed is like, you, you see the end result and you assume that that's the path to get there. It's the hours and hours of training. It's the, um, multiple workouts a day. Um, and it's just not the case. I think there are some outliers right now that are, are promoting this lifestyle of like, it doesn't have to be so much time in the gym, or you can do it all from your garage, or you can, um, you know, do it all in the kitchen. You know, maybe you don't have time to train or you're battling an injury. You can still have a six pack. You just need to, um, you know, eat right or watch, watch how you're eating at least. And, um, so there's, there are some outliers that are, are starting to spread that. And I think that that's helpful for people, for all people, for women, for sure. Um, but yeah, I think, it was a few years back where the assumption was more is better, Mm -hmm. you know, more in, in training is better. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't think that's the answer. More is just more. (laughs) Um, and you know, I currently train well now that we're on lockdown for quarantine, I've been training in an hour long zoom class with some of my clients, um, that are from CrossFit headquarters. And that's been really fun, but this is a highly modified class. The population is mainly clients who are the least likely to join a CrossFit gym. CrossFit headquarters has targeted them and offered them a program, whether they're dealing with different injuries or illnesses, or um, some of them are dealing with, um, you know, obesity, something they battled their whole life and they don't see themselves as CrossFit. Mm -hmm. And CrossFit headquarters has said, yes, we can show you how and so this class is full of modifications and it's it still kicks my butt because you just 
you just get out what you put in. Um, it doesn't have to be heaviest weight, the most reps, the longest workout, this many times a day at all. And prior to the lockdown, I was lucky if I was getting in, you know, 20 minutes in the gym with how busy um, I was with work and keeping up with my kids. Um, 20 minutes, and that wasn't even every day. That was 20 minutes, maybe two to three times a week, if I was lucky. Um, wow. Yeah, training took a back seat. So, <laughs> um, but I find that it's still, you're still, you know, you don't lose everything. I didn't lose all yeah. my muscle mass. I didn't um, gain, you know, tens of pounds all of a sudden. It's like, um, if the lifestyle is part of what you already do, you, you can stay pretty much where you're at. You know, you're going to lose some things. You're going to lose some of your top end strength. You're going to lose some of your cardiorespiratory endurance, but you can get those back when yeah. you're training, when your when your schedule frees up a little more and you can dedicate some more time. Like I am now, now I'm training more like five days a week and mm -hmm. for an hour each time. So mm. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling to get back into it. But, um, as far as body composition, it's probably about the same. Mm. Um, between the two to like two to three times a week and now five days a week. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I get, like I said, I, I know I lost some muscle strength. I know mm -hmm. I lost some respiratory endurance cause I can feel it <laughs> mm -hmm. like feeling like, Oh man, my grip gets tired way easier. You know, I can't hold on to the pull-up bar as long or, um, you know, the, the mile run is a lot more uncomfortable on my lungs than it was. So yeah. it, I definitely noticed those differences, but, um, in terms of, how I want my body to look and feel, um, yeah. it's still doing what I need it to do, you know? Yeah. Does that surprise you? It did at first. I think I've been out of the game long enough that now <laughs> I I'm confident. I know that I, I know where I can be. Um, and it's, it's always going to be tough if you look back at how you were. Mm -hmm. I think we all have different stages of our life. I mean, I can look back to how I was when I was a, college volleyball player and be like oh those were the days I can't do that anymore I mean I, I I'm still I could go play volleyball but I don't practice it every day for three mm -hmm. hours like I did so how could my skills be anywhere near what they were and if I judged myself on that that's unfair I was mm -hmm. that was my job in college for four years so why would I be as good as the, at those skills now and it's the same thing if I don't have the same uh, one rep max deadlift, which I obviously don't, as when I was competing, you know, for CrossFit and, uh, and even doing powerlifting meets in between. It's like, mm -hmm. why would I have that? I was dedicated. That was my job. I was being, I had sponsors that were making sure I could dedicate my time to that. Um, it would, it would be silly if I still could do that, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, or how many muscle ups I could do in a row that was my job to do that many and to be able to get that workout done that quick. So I mm -hmm. used to get very upset when I would see my times on benchmark workouts or test something like that and be like, Oh, it's worse. But then I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> I'm not in the gym seven hours a day. So yeah. why would, if it was the same, I'd be kicking myself. I'd be like, I couldn't, I didn't have to do all that training. I, yeah. you know, yeah. waste the time. So yeah. it, it was a realization, you know, a few years back. And now it's just like, of course, of course that's different. That's okay. And yeah. in my opinion, you know, I'm not young. I'm, I'm 37. I'm well into the, you know, the first CrossFit masters category. Um, and definitely out of peak CrossFit age, you know, if you look at like the, the, um, CrossFit individual athletes, but in my opinion, I could go back to one of those, any of those, if I'd like. Could I be at my best as I was in CrossFit? I, I don't know about that, but I could get my deadlift back up. I could get my muscle ups back if I wanted to. If I want to dedicate mm -hmm. time to that, I could do that. Um, yeah. It's just not a priority, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. I think it's interesting. I think uh, when we, I, like, especially with CrossFitters, because we put so much time into uh, getting these skills, you know, that, that take a lot of effort um to get and then we were afraid to lose them you know i think that that's that's half of the crew and then the other half is i'm afraid of what's going to happen to my body if i let go of the training that i'm doing right. 
And, and then, and so then at that point, the, the workouts become a chore, right? It almost becomes like a burden or a chore because now I have to do it rather than that. I actually love to do it. So, um, how has your mentality shifted, uh, when it comes to, to working out, like how, wh what was your, um, you know, what, what goes through your head now? Like, do you intentionally, do you go hard or you, do you just go for fun? How do you like decide on what, how the intensity you're going to do for the day? That's a really good question. Yeah, it was, um, I definitely can relate to that. It, it training started to feel like a chore. Um, it started to feel like work and it, that started to feel actually creeping into my head. As soon as I got my first sponsor, it changed it for me. And that, that's, you know, that was my own mental battle. Um, that the purity that it was somehow for me was gone. And I, I spent the next several years trying to get that feeling back and I would have moments of it, but, um, a lot of the time it still felt like work and the fun was gone. Um, I think part of that too was the training partners, things started shifting because we all had coaches and we all had um, mm. sponsors now. And so we all had that responsibility, uh, whereas it was a lot more carefree. But um, I, it actually, I think it gave me some good insight into how some people might feel about training because for for me, I always have enjoyed exercise and I always enjoyed being in the weight room when I was an athlete in high school and in college. And uh, it wasn't a chore. I didn't roll my eyes when it was time to do strength and conditioning. I kind of liked it is where I excelled, um, on most of my teams. And so, um, I always had that going for me, but then I found that it made it hard for, harder for me to relate to clients, clients who've never been in the gym, clients who was their first exposure was when I introduced them to their first CrossFit class or a one-on-one -on -one session. And I'm so passionate about it. And, um, I, I obviously do it, you know, they, they would look at me and i you know, I've got a muscular build. And so that's, it was obvious that I trained. And so, um, it was maybe harder for me to relate to their feeling of whether it was fear or insecurity or, um, just maybe it was just pure dislike. I don't like this feeling. I don't like sweating or I don't like feeling tired or I don't like being sore later on. Or I don't, you know, these are things that you, you could probably relate. Like, I kind of like it. I'm weird. I like when I'm sore. I'm like, yes, I did something. This sucks. I can barely sit down, but this is awesome because I trained hard. You know, like I'm trying to fall asleep and my lats are like twitching and I'm like, yeah. yes, I, you know, I did enough pull-ups or whatever to feel it's like, but, um, some people really don't like that and that's not wrong, but I think I had a harder time relating to that mm -hmm. initially. Um, and so now that, uh, my lifestyle has shifted a bit, I think sometimes with my schedule and the time I have available training has felt like a, maybe a chore or a, Oh, I have to, I have to go out and train and let me squeeze it in really quick. And, you know, kind of just barely do a warm up and really quick, just get this over with. And that was a bummer because I it used to always be something I loved. And so um, I guess in one sense, it's helped me with clients to kind of be able to relate. But in another sense, um, it's been something I've been trying to get back to that passion I've had. And mm. so um, for me, it's, it's different things that will motivate me at different times. Um, I like doing workouts that I know other people are doing. So, you know, taking a class for me is huge. Um, like I said, lately, these Zoom classes or when I can train with a group, um, I, I love that because I know other people are doing it. I've gotten mm -hmm. better about comparing myself to them and more just enjoy that, hey, this sucks, this hurts. They're doing it too. It sucks and it hurts for them. I'm not that special. You know, stop feeling sorry for myself go cheer them on. And so by kind of shooting them some energy, like you got this, um, you know, I know, I, I know, I know you know, you've got it because I feel it too. Like we're in it together, sort of a feeling. If I can't be in that environment, I like doing a workout that I know my clients are going to do. So, you know, I program for a lot of one-on-one -on -one mm. clients. So maybe I'll do a workout that they're going to do that day. And then I, in my mind, it's not that I'm setting the bar and trying to get the faster time. I'm mm -hmm. experiencing what I either designed or if I found it on, you know, crossfit.com, I'm experiencing it so that I can lead them through it. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. I, it, I think it's only fair to go as hard as I can go. 
And so then in that sense, I'm, I'm pushing myself for the future client that might be coming later that day. And so I can tell them, oh my gosh, the worst part was when you get off the rower and you have to go pick up the bar. But here's what I realized. If I just took like two seconds to shake it out, I could hold onto the bar way longer. You know, on round one, I tried to race back to it and it was awful. And so like, I'm giving them strategy like a competition, but what I'm really doing is I'm giving them mental coaching. I'm mm -hmm. giving them sort of a way to not just endure mm -hmm. and survive the workout, but be an active participant in it and, and choose how you're going to do this. And mm -hmm. I think that's an important shift for people that are learning how to like training. <laughs> They're learning how to enjoy this. And um, it, it's, again, it's not trying to turn into a competition. It's not so they get the fastest time or the most reps. It's about um, giving them that something else to focus on other than mm -hmm. this hurts. I'm yeah. tired. I'm out of breath. I'm uncomfortable. And so that's for me, I have to shift my brain to another focus. Okay. I'm doing reconnaissance. I'm figuring this out so I can help them. Mm -hmm. And um, the best way to figure it out is to be as uncomfortable as possible. And then the flip side is I teach them that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's my hope and my strategy, I guess, <laughs> mm -hmm. for my training. Yeah. So yeah, you work with you work with people that um, aren't really already doing a lot. So it's completely, it's a bit different versus uh, somebody who like. Do you work with any clients that are or that are doing a lot that are already like they CrossFit all the time, like every day, and they they go hard. Not a ton of CrossFit okay. athletes currently. Um, the closest comparison is that I do have some um, student athletes, like. Um, local high school athletes so they're um using me as their strength and conditioning and um so that's kind of the closest comparison that i have to okay. kind of be mindful they're they're competitive by nature they're going to go hard um they're doing other things outside of my training so i have to kind of manage that but yeah mm -hmm. and how do you find the balance between like hey you know um it when your body just isn't isn't wanting to work out hard like do you you know how do you teach them that's okay too yeah i think um recovery is a big part of um, learning to train um something that my husband and i both talk about a lot with our clients is that it's not about over training it's about under recovering or being mm -hmm. under recovered um because different people can handle different amounts of training it's not like the right amount of days or time in the gym is X and anything above that is overtraining. Um, and that's something we talk about a lot with our youth athletes who are going and doing multiple sports and they have practices and then they come in for strength and conditioning. Um, they need to be recovered. And that's something that we teach in terms of nutrition, hydration, sleep, stress management. Um, these are the things that they can control outside of the gym that are going to allow them to be successful when they do train or go to practice. And the same is for um, any level of athlete, someone just starting out. If they're just starting out with CrossFit, two days a week might feel like a lot. It might really wear them out and that's fine, but we have to make sure that what they're doing on the other days of the week is serving those two days. It's allowing them to recover. You know, are you getting enough sleep each night or are you up all night either watching TV on your phone or busy doing work maybe you know sometimes um schedules cause people to have different um times that they're able to even get to sleep and so if that's not allowing them to really um take on the level of training that their body or that their mind is telling them they need it's never going to work mm -hmm. so um recovery is a huge piece of um what i talk about with my athletes and then so what i do is whoever comes in the gym that day and I don't mean which client, I mean, which version of that client, right? Whoever, you know, me today isn't the same me tomorrow because I'm going to have the effects of what I do today. Whether that's I stay up all night and eat a bunch of junk food, then I'm a different person tomorrow. And you ask me to go train, I'm going to feel different. So um, whoever walks in the gym that day, that's the person I'm training. So I have all their numbers and what they've lifted before and how fast they did that and how many reps of this, but to an extent, it's only a guide. It doesn't, it's not a, it's not set. Um, I think that's 
something that athletes kind of take for granted. You know, their meals are set because they have someone helping them. You know, maybe they, they're pre-portioned out. Meal plan delivery is their sponsor. And so food is taken care of. And um, they're, they don't have to worry about sleep because they're on a certain sleep pattern or they have a special device that's telling them how much they need. Like, I don't know. But um, for everyday people, they may have just always survived on four or five hours of sleep a night. Mm -hmm. And they may have just always eaten a certain way. And they just maybe never really drink water. I don't know. And so all these things add up and training is a beat down every time. So I think for me, I just, who's coming in that day? How are you? How do you feel? What's your body telling you? That's what we're going to work with today. I have mm -hmm. a plan on, on what I've prepared, but we got to go with who showed up today and mm -hmm. um, how they feel. And so coaching them on what they do outside of the gym can be tough because there's got to be a willingness to, to mm -hmm. work on those things. Right. Um, and not everyone sees the, the option. Some of them think this is just the way I, my lifestyle is right now. So mm -hmm. um, you can't expect too much from yourself uh, for, you know, an hour training session. If the other 23 hours of the day, you haven't right. really been taking care of your body. Yeah. Okay. So what do you do to take um, care of your body? What are the other aspects that allow you to, cause you look great girl. So, and you know, train two, three times a week. What are you doing um, with all that other time? How do you, what, what's your priorities in order to stay um, fit? For me, um, nutrition is huge. So um, eating real food, non-processed food um, as much as possible. I can't say I'm perfect. You know, we definitely have, um, we have snacks and goodies around the house that I have to try to avoid like crazy. <laughs> um, but for me, the best option is as much uh, whole fruits and vegetables and meats. Um, I do well with dairy. So I also do cheese and stuff like that, but I need to always be eating, um, real foods. <laughs> and then for me, quantity is the issue. So, um, I have to every now and then check in on my quantities. So what I'll do is, and that's not just so that I'm cautious not to overeat a certain macronutrient, but it's also, I find that I am short on how much protein I'm getting. So it's also making sure I don't have too little of a certain macronutrient. And so for me, I have lived the super strict measure all my food, weigh and measure constantly everything um, lifestyle. And it worked. It did its job. Absolutely. I've been, I've also had tried very restrictive diets, things like a ketogenic diet and um, uh, carb night where you're just kind of super low carb down, you know, less than 30 grams a day and then one night a week, you'll have carbohydrates. And so I've tried and experimented with all of these different things. Um, at the time was to, to fuel myself as an athlete. Now I look back and realize that it's pretty cool that I have these experiences to talk to my athletes about. But for my own self right now, weighing and measuring, it's not a priority. It's not part of my everyday life. But I think periodically it's helpful for me to check in and measure out how many ounces of protein, what it looks like on the plate, because I'll forget, you know, you, you calibrate your eye and then you lose that over time. Mm -hmm. And so I, I can very easily under eat protein and very easily overeat fat and carbohydrates. So I just kind of like to re recalibrate, engage those. And, um, you know, I've used different, you know, apps or whatever, but a lot of times it's just about like, how many grams did I, I mean, like I, I'm a pencil and paper girl a lot of times and I'll just write down a day of what I eat. Like I would have my client do and I'll just look at it and kind of just crunch the numbers really quick. I'm like, what did that come out to? Um, maybe not as much calorically, not that that's mm -hmm. irrelevant, but just more so in like, in terms of macronutrients, was I roughly balanced throughout the day? Mm -hmm. um, and that starts to give me a little bit of a guide and somehow the act of writing it down just keeps me a little bit more focused. Yeah. Yeah. It keeps me a little bit more focused on not just putting any old thing in my mouth. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the reality for me is that, you know, like my, my kids, you know, they're, they're middle school age now. So they're, they're sufficient on their own in the kitchen. So they like to bake or make different like goodies and stuff. And um, that stuff is around the house all the time. So for me, it's also about choosing. Like if, if every night 
I'm having a treat because they are, that, that doesn't work for me. It doesn't feel good. And the next day I don't feel good. But if my kid bakes something and wants me to try it and I'm like, no, no, I, I couldn't possibly like, then it's a little over the top for me. So that, and those are the instances where I'm like, yeah, of course I'm going to try the cookie you made. That's awesome. It tastes great. And I just kind of keep in account like, okay, so that's, I, I'm probably not going to need as much starch later on in the day. Cause I just ate a bunch of flour and sugar or whatever it was. So, um, that to me is something that people can practice that type of, um, eating and not feel bad about it. Mm -hmm. And, um, for me, it's all about like when I want to choose to do those things. Like I said, we have the goodies around the house that are easy to grab and, you know, between my husband and the kids, it's just like, we're never going to stop buying these things. And I can't mm -hmm. live by them just being thrown away and out of the pantry. So for me, it's just easier to be like, you know, those will always exist. I don't need to have those right now. I can live my life without them. And then on the, the occasions, it's more, it's, and then to me, it's more enjoyable. So um, for the most part, I'm not weighing and measuring. I'm not obsessing about, I have certain routines of things I like to eat. I know what proteins work well throughout the day for me. You know, it's usually eggs in the morning. Sometimes it's cottage cheese um, around lunch, or maybe it's more like a chicken in a, uh, in a salad. And then dinners we always do together. And um, we, we usually eat a lot of red meat in our house. So we have steaks, we have ground beef, we do a lot of chicken and pork as well. And we always have a green vegetable and a starch at dinner. And the starch is sometimes potatoes, sweet potatoes, uh, white rice. And what I typically do is I serve up the protein first, I pile on the green veggies, and then I rarely, if ever, grab the starch because I've usually had enough um, mm, carbohydrates okay. throughout the day through fruits and um, other starches maybe after my workout so if if we have a bunch of potatoes i i would use like a tablespoon serving compared to what everyone else is having if we're having white rice i almost never have it uh kind of depends on uh the day and what i've had already but i usually yeah. feel i don't need it and the protein and the veggies are going to fill me up so mm -hmm. um that's a system that's worked well for me and kind of yeah. managing um, and not having to put everything into an app or uh, calculate every single thing. Or spend every, all day in the gym. To yeah, burn it off. to burn yeah. it off, right? That's how I used to live is like, okay, I can eat all this and then burn it all off. And it's like, it's first awesome. of all, it doesn't, mm -hmm. yeah, first of all, it doesn't work that, that way. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it's not as simple of a system as that. Our bodies are so much more complex than calorie in, calorie out. Um, there's a degree that that has um, some some validity, but it's not it's not a system that's just so easy to understand. You have we have we have to all agree by now that our bodies are so much more complex than that, and so what you eat um, affects you in so many other ways than just like how many calories the treadmill says afterward or the elliptical yeah. machine. And that's how I yeah. used to think, um, mm -hmm. and I've learned now. That's so not the case. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, what do you feel like you struggle with the most with food? I would say sweets, I, mm -hmm. for sure. I've always grown up, um, my whole life, we always had sweets around the house. And I was never an overweight or heavy kid because I was always really active in sports and stuff. But, um, and I kind of had that young metabolism that let me kind of just burn through whatever. But every lunch and every dinner was always followed with a dessert. Like that was just normal. In my lunch, I had cookies for after I ate my lunch and after dinner, I would have, uh, you know, cookies or ice cream or something. It was just part of the culture. Um, at the time, my parents laugh at it. Now they're like, we were ridiculous. And we all had like sugary cereals for breakfast. Uh, you know, cause now my parents are totally on board with how, um, you know, eating real food and cutting down on sweets and all these things. But as a kid, that was just normal. And so it was a tough shift and realize, realization through college that this isn't fueling me for what I want anymore. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think I just always have that sweet tooth. And so, um, and watching my husband and my kids have dessert every night, I'm always like, I want that. Like, I deserve that. I worked out. I want, and so the mental battle of that is probably will always be tough for me. Mm -hmm. um, it's, 
it's enjoyable. I like it. I, and I also like to bake. So if the girls are baking something, you're like, I want to bake. And then you're like, well, I want to try whatever I make. So um, mm -hmm. I would say that's probably my downfall um, or like the sweets, especially at the end of the day. So yeah. 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 Same here. Do you have, yeah. so do you have a go-to for like a low calorie sweet substitute that you can have while the kids and then, you know, the boys, or I mean, uh, the husband has yeah. his stuff? That's a good question. Uh, you know, there's nothing that's going to ever substitute it. Like I've always um, tried to be careful with like telling clients like, oh, this will be your treat. And they're like, it's not a treat. It's a piece of fruit, you know, and so, <laughs> but you start to eat differently, yeah. I think the more I take out processed foods, the more that real foods taste amazing. And that sounds like such a like lame nutrition or, you know, coach type of thing to say, but it's so true. You have to eliminate those things to really taste how great steak and asparagus and these things actually are, um, yeah. you know, you're nodding because you agree, but people that have never lived that life, they're like, you're crazy. And, you know, I'm going to go get McDonald's and keep telling you you're crazy. But my yeah. go-to, and it's actually, what's great is that it's sweet. It's got fat. So it's super filling and it's got like a, um, the, the carbs and the fat together feel like a treat. Like that's, what's so amazing about sweets for me yeah. is it's the carbs and the fat. Like, I don't right. need a spoonful of sugar, I don't need a pixie stick or a piece of candy. I want like something that's got the fat and the sugar. And so I usually do like berries, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, fresh berries, and um, creme fraiche. So like really high fat cream that okay. would be, uh, or even like, um, you could even get like a, I think it's like a clotted cream or something like that similar, but um, okay. creme fraiche is like super um, creamy, good. but there's no sweetness to it. Like mm -hmm. it's almost sour, not sour cream sour, mm -hmm. but it's almost got yeah. a sourness, but you put that, a dollop of that with the berries and the sweet with the fat. Oh my God. It's like, it's like having an ice cream or something. Obviously it's not yeah. cold, but um, I love that. And what's great is that it actually fills me up. I don't want a snack. Hey guys, just wanted to pop in here real quick. I've been talking to so many women lately and the one thing that just keeps coming up for them is finances. So I listened and I've created a super affordable small group coaching program to get you unstuck without breaking the bank. Every 90 days, I launch a new group program of 20 like-minded ladies or less and I coach them through this exact steps to losing fat and building muscle without having to kill themselves in the gym or obsess over food. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at natalie.newhart to stay up to date on when the next group kicks off or just send me an email to claim your spot in the next group. All right, guys, back to the show. So one kind of question about working out, like when you don't feel like working out, what do you do? That's a really good question. Um, for me, I usually just try to move. I don't try to make it like a workout. Um, I have the benefit of having a full on CrossFit gym in my garage, meaning I've got a pull up bar, a rower, a skier, a bike, all the dumbbells, all the kettlebells. So I'm super spoiled and I have no excuses. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of play out there. I'll pick up a dumbbell and I'll start doing this or that. I'll grab the rings and I'll do this or that. If I don't really like set a number to it or write it on the whiteboard or start the clock, I also have to put on really good music, loud, mm -hmm. and I just play out there. And what usually happens organically, and it's because I've grown up in the gym, you know, I started weight training when I was 13. What happens organically is I end up finding a three, four, five things that yeah. I keep repeating, mm -hmm. you know, and all, a lot of times in between, I kick into a handstand for fun because yeah. handstands are fun. And like, I just, and then I'm trying to, and then I'm distracted trying to do hand balancing or something. Um, cause that's never been a strong area for me. So it's a challenge and it's kind of a fun one. And yeah, I end up just kind of letting it be just play. Yeah. And then no after expectations. I do a few times, yeah. After I do a few times, I'm done and that's mm -hmm. it. And did I sweat that time? I don't know. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. It, it yeah. doesn't, ha I can't, okay. I can't rank it, but yeah. I have to just be okay with the fact that I moved around a little bit. Right. It's a consistency and really making sure that we keep this thing fun. Right. Right. And yeah. seeing you like it as a chore, like, oh my God, if it's an all or nothing thing. It's not worth it if I don't go hard. And that's yeah. the thing is that that might be 
15 minutes, 10 minutes. I mean, all in all of, of actual training, not including moving between one thing to the next, standing there thinking about what I should do. You know, mm -hmm. I'm probably out there for 20 minutes, but how much movement am I really doing? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's only 10 minutes, but it doesn't matter because what it ends mm -hmm. up doing is it was me time, which is hugely mm -hmm. important, especially as a as a parent and a wife. So anyone out there who can relate to those, one of those roles, or even just, um, even if you're single with no kids, you're going to work every day, you're giving up your time. So having something that's my time just for me is super important. So carving that out is what it does. And then what it does for me at least is it keeps the ball rolling or maybe gets it rolling if it was at a st stop, if I hadn't trained in a couple days. Mm -hmm. And the next day, I'm so much more likely to go in the gym with a little bit of a plan or a little bit of a fire under my, you know, yeah. under my butt. It, it doesn't keep you back at square zero. You yeah. get to count that step. I think people think that if it wasn't an, you know, an hour long spin class, you don't get yeah. to count the clock. It just doesn't count as a step. And mm -hmm. that's false. Go on a walk. That's something we've been doing a lot during this quarantine you know, mm -hmm. go on a, we have a sort of like a easy path. That's like a half mile up, half mile back. And we've all been going on walks, you know, the kids will go or they'll go on a, a scooter or a skateboard and a husband and I'll walk together or separately. And it's just like, don't have to turn into a power walk. Don't need to strap on the ankle weights or hold dumbbells, just move. It counts. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Check mm -hmm. that box and go on to the next day. Um, I agree. It cannot be the all or nothing mentality. Um, mm -hmm. What would you say to your friend, you know, if they walked and they said, oh, I suck, all I did was walk, you'd be like, at least you did something, but you won't say it to yourself. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So we got to kind of treat ourselves the way we would treat our, a family member or a friend or a client. Mm -hmm. You would want them to feel the positive motivation and not the, that's all you did. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, we, we're way harsher in here than we are to each other. Mm -hmm. And we're driving from different places out of that. Like we could even, you know, two people can go for a walk and one people thinks that they have to go for a walk. And the other person is excited to go for a walk. And those two different emotions are going to dictate probably how well you eat for the rest of the day. You know, if you're driving out of fear nonstop, then that can, that most likely will cause you to sort of just always be in this sort of stressed out state versus just enjoying it and, um, yeah. you know, feeling more in control around the sweets and stuff like that. So around food. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, so last, uh, final question. So, um, what do you think is like, what's your one piece of advice for somebody like a woman who, um, wants to look fit and she's been, you know, she feels like she's doing everything right. She's working out, she's eating well, she's not seeing results. Um, what would you, what's your, and she wants more balance, right? Just more balance, you know, in the gym and like not having to obsess over food. What is your one piece of advice, um, having made the transition that you have, uh, to, to stay fit and create more freedom, like in your life, you know? Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's like, yeah, I feel like that's like the, the big question. <laughs> How do you just fix it? What's the piece of advice? Mm -hmm. Um, I think people are going to find different routines that work. And then that routine is going to, it's going to maybe stop working. Maybe it works for a long time. That's great. And then maybe it stops. I think we need to kind of be prepared for that. There's different milestones and times in our life where routines, certain routines work. And that could be fitness. That could be nutrition. Um, it could be both. And then those, something shifts, you know, something happens to your body, you get hurt, you lose your job, you break up with your boyfriend, you're someone in your family gets sick, and you have to start helping. Um, and now your routine just got disrupted, or maybe it's completely destroyed, your gym closed, and you have nowhere to go. Um, and people get really discouraged there. I know I, I have gotten really discouraged. And then you feel like you don't know where to go, where to start. You had everything going, you had your routine. Maybe you were just starting things out and you had your routine going and then you hit a little bit of a hiccup and now it's hard to get re-motivated to, to, to start back up on that same routine. But whatever it is, I think the hardest part is that like when we get shook and thrown off, we don't know how to get back. 
we get lost and we and, and a lot of us it takes a long time some people it takes years decades I haven't trained in five years or ten years and this is my la first time in the gym in this many years or I haven't done any exercise and they they allow it to lapse for so long and and you think you know you hear their story and they go I used to be fit or I used to be really active when I was younger or this and that and, and you just think like why haven't you for so long? It was a part of your life. And I think it's because those disruptions happen and we don't know how to find our way back. And so if we can almost prepare ourselves that whatever is working for you right now, maybe it's your personal trainer is awesome. Maybe it's you just found the perfect diet that works for you. It just clicks and you're just, everything just tastes amazing and it's all working great. Whatever, you have to be prepared for some of this, all of this to stop, to go away. And you know what's kind of funny is I think that this, um, you know, what's happening right now in the world with coronavirus, not to get too like soapboxy, but I feel like it's a really good like uh, expression of that. And it's yes. showing us like everything that was normal and good and working for us um, has just been completely stopped. And everyone is just like, er, what do we do? And so that's going to happen throughout your life, in your nutrition, in your fitness, in both. And you can't let that create this lapse. You have to expect it. Everything's going good now. You don't have to be on edge like, oh, any second now, this diet's going to stop working. I don't mean it like that. But you have to just, when it happens, be like, I knew, I thought this could happen. What's my option? Do I just kind of keep sticking with it? Do I try something different? Do I see how I do without it? You have to be like an active participant. A lot of times when I have clients that have gone through this, they almost um, come off sounding like they're the victim of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I couldn't train for 10 years because of my kids. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. what if they just wouldn't allow it? What, you know, it's just like, I, I understand. I, I know and I'm close to people who have had those experiences, but um, there, there's always a way, right? And it's, it's all about being open to it being different. Mm -hmm. Don't expect it to look how it did. If I expected my training today to look like what it looked like in 2009, then I'll never be happy and I'll never train because it doesn't look like that. It does. I don't have my closest friends in the gym with me all day long, not a care in the world. And you know, we, like it doesn't look like that anymore. And so I could either get really depressed and not train or I could just go with, this is the new version of what it is now. Yeah. And you know, in another year, what I'm doing is it might have to shift and be different because my right. lifestyle is a little bit different. So I think the best piece of advice, which maybe doesn't even feel like uh, a plan, but it's almost like be prepared for the unknown, be prepared for it all to change and go away. Mm -hmm. Be prepared for you to break your foot. And then what are you going to do? You're mm -hmm. not going to be able to keep going on your runs that you go on every day. What can you possibly do? Mm -hmm. You're going to give up until your foot heals. What if your foot heals and then there's like some issue that keeps going on and you just, I mean, the what ifs could keep mm -hmm. you up at night, but mm -hmm. if instead you just go, I'm adaptable, I can find a way. And, um, you know, I think you and I would both agree that a good way is to look for a resource or an, or, um, help from someone, mm -hmm. whether it's a friend or a coach or someone that can kind of be your, your pal in this, There's someone mm -hmm. you can vent right. to, someone you can ask for advice, someone who can motivate you, someone who can tell you you're doing great, even though you're just feel like you're hanging in there. Mm -hmm. um, but if you don't expect these, these hiccups, <laughs> they're going to level you and you're going to be right back to where you started from. Right. And so yeah. back there. And that's the scary, that's the scary thing for a lot of people who have made some progress. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to go back. So mm -hmm. be prepared for what's going to come. Some storm is going to hit and you can weather it and you can adapt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's keeping that the vision stays the same, but your strategy will change. Totally. Vision's the same. We all want to be healthy, fit, but the strategy, you got to be adaptable and know yeah. when that strategy is no longer working for you. And as a coach, it up. if your coach doesn't adapt and change, you might need to look for another coach. If they just have CrossFit. That's what we do. We do CrossFit. That's it. What do you mean you can't do CrossFit right now? It's like, well, we might need to water that down a little bit. It might not get mm -hmm. to look like CrossFit last year. It might need to look like 
this version, you know, and that's okay. Yeah. Uh, you, you've got to have your support team has to adapt with you. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Katie, that has been an awesome conversation. Um, where can people find you? Where can, where can they find you? Oh, um, well, on, I'm guessing you're talking about like social media. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. No, not your address. On, on social media. I'll say the best is Instagram. I mean, I, I have some of the other ones, but I never, ever remember to go on them. So on Instagram, I am Katie Hogan 777. And um, I'm trying to be better about posting things and being on there. But if there's one thing that's reached the bottom of the priority list, it's social media, unfortunately. As it <laughs> should, yes. as it should. Yeah, but I'm there. I'm still there. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's cool to check you out though. And, and now it's like, it, man, two to three times a week. That's a, that's amazing. You know, um, oh, I lost you. There we go. Um, so yeah, make sure you guys check her out. Is there anything else that you want to promote or, um, you know, any, anything else that you want to give a shout out to? No, I'm not really involved in any other projects right now. So no, that's it. <laughs> okay. Cool, Katie. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Until next time, we'll see you guys on the next episode.